Okay, fourth graders, we are going to continue our study of decimals. Um, it is chapter 13-5, and this time we're doing ordering of decimals, which is very, very similar to the um, comparing of decimals that we did yesterday. Um, the rules are going to be exactly the same, which if you have not written them in your notebook from yesterday, here are the rules and you're going to need to pause the video now and copy these down. Okay. If you um, have written them down, we're going to just continue going on now. When you compared decimals yesterday, we said that you had to um, write them down in an alignment and then you started on the left hand side and you kept com uh, comparing one digit at a time from the greatest place value all the way to the smallest place value and you kept going until you got two numbers that were different and then you could just look at those two numbers and decide if this one was greater than less than or equal to this one and that meant the whole number then was greater than or equal to or less than whichever you had decided it was going to be the difference is that today instead of it just being a decimal and a decimal that you're going to decide is less than, greater than, or equal to the other decimal, you're going to have a string of decimals. They will be separated by a semicolon. Okay? The reason they're going to use a semicolon is because some of our larger numbers, when you have to separate the periods, you're going to put a comma between the periods. So between the ones period and the thousands period, there's going to be commas. And then between the thousands and the millions, there's going to be comma, a comma. So it, that would get too confusing. So the semicolon tells you that's one whole number. It may have a comma in it, but it's separated by a semicolon. Then the next whole number, it may have a comma or two in there as well. So that's why they're going to use semicolon. And what you have to do is you have to look at each one of those numbers one at a time compared to the others using all the steps that you learned yesterday. Okay, so let's jump right in um, and look at an example. Let's say you were given um, the uh, finishing times from a race, okay? And you have to put them into the order from the fastest time to the slowest time. Okay, so um, we're going to be doing the fastest time to the lowest time. So the fastest time is going to have, is going to be the lowest number. If I run from here to here and you time it, and then you run from there to there and you time it, whoever went faster is going to have a smaller number on the timer. So fastest means lowest and slowest is going to mean the highest number or the greatest number, okay? So even though lowest and slowest rhyme, they don't go together. Fastest, lowest, slowest, highest, okay? So now you're gonna be given a bunch of times in a chart. And one is 40 and 1 tenth seconds and seconds, I'll put it this way. Another person's time is 40 and 3 tenths seconds. Pretty close there. And um, my, Maya's time is 30, 38 and 3 hundredths of a second. And... Tanya's is 36 and 33 hundredths seconds. These are all seconds. Okay? That's what it says in the chart. All right. So, if you were given the numbers, if you were given these in um, a whole row, it would be 40.1 40, 40 semicolon. 40.3 semicolon, 38.03 semicolon, and 36.33. And you would rewrite them this way, okay? 
I am going to erase the word seconds because I don't have a lot of room. And I'm going to rewrite these in such a way that they're all in alignment by their decimal point because that's the first thing you always have to do is you have to put them hamburger style into alignment. So the first one is 40 and 1 tenth, 40 and 3 tenths, 38 and 3 hundredths. Notice that this three, I'm gonna write it even a little further out, is in a separate column from the zero, the three, and the one here. And then the last one is gonna be 36 and 33 hundredths. So I'm still not liking the way that three is. It's important that they're in columns so that you line them up by their decimal points. Okay, so I am going from, I'm going to change this back to the math word, greatest. And I'm gonna change lowest to our math word, least. And the way we have to put them in order is from least to greatest. So I always write up near the problem somewhere, I always put whatever it is, L to G, so that I remember that I'm going from least to greatest. Now, the reason I need to remember that is because the directions will change throughout the page. Sometimes they'll be asking you for greatest to least, sometimes least to greatest. And most of the time, a fourth grader gets this wrong, not because they don't know how to put the things in order, but because they did not read the directions and give the answer the way to the question you were being asked, okay? So I'm being asked to go from the fastest to the lowest, which is the least to the greatest. All righty. So I rewrite my numbers so that they're all in alignment. I start at my first left-hand column, which will have the greatest value, and I start to compare my digits. I have four, and I have four, and I have three, and I have three. Well, obviously, these two are smaller than those two. And that's what I'm going for. I'm going for the smallest one first. So it's gonna be one of these two. So for now, I'm not even gonna think about those top ones. So I've got a three and a three. So now I move one digit to the right and, and I keep going to the right until I find two digits that are different from one another. And I'm getting lucky right away. I have 38 and 36 and I can tell right away which one is smallest. The bottom one is smallest, so I'm going to rewrite it now to 36 and 33 hundredths. That's my first one. My second one is gonna be the other one that begins with a three. 38 and three hundredths of a second. Okay, so they're done. So for now, I'm gonna erase them because we don't need them on the board here anymore. So now I have to look at the outside digits of these two. When I had these other ones here, when I had 38 and 3 hundredths and I had 36 and 33 hundredths, what I kept going until I got ones that were different and these two were different, okay? Now I'm going back to these. Same, same. So I move to the right. Same, same. So I still can't tell which one's bigger. So then I have to go to the other side of the decimal point. Now I have a 40 with a one and a 40 with a three. Which one is smaller? The 40 with the one tenth. One tenth is smaller than three tenths. Three tenths equals one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth. One tenth equals one tenth. So obviously it's smaller. So that would be the next one in the list. 40 and one tenth seconds. And then, so now I've done this one, I've done this one, I've done this one. All that's left is our largest one, which is 40 and three tenths. So you're done. Okay, let's try another one. Let's see 
what other one could we do? What if we had to um, put these numbers on a number line? So I'm going to erase this part up here and I'm going to see if I can draw myself a number line using those numbers. Okay, you might be asked to put something on a number line and then a number line can help you. So I'm going to draw my number line with arrows going in both directions because they go on forever and ever. We're just going to be looking at a piece of the number line. Now we are looking to put number, we're going to start in this case, our number line is going to start at zero and our number line, um, you know what? These numbers are going to be too big because they, you know, 30s or whatever. And I don't want to draw 30 numbers. So I'm going to give you a different set of numbers that I want you to put on this number line. I'm going to give you um, six tenths. Let me put it in blue. Six tenths. So it's 0 0.6, six tenths. And I want you to put four tenths. Okay, I'm separating them with a semicolon. And 78 one hundredths. And hmm, 65 one hundredths. Okay, so now all of these numbers are going to um, fall between zero and one on our number line between zero and one, because there are no holes in either of these numbers. Every one of them begins with a zero. So it's going to start at zero, and none of them go up to the whole number one. So it's all between zero and one on our number line. So we're going to to start to figure out what's the scale that I'm going to break down my number line into. What should the, um, the, the markings, the labels on the markings be? Should I, since I'm going between zero tenths and 10 tenths, right? Because, because one whole equals 10 tenths, right? Remember that from fractions, zero tenths, zero tenths equals zero and 10 tenths equals one whole. So in, in a fraction, this would be the same thing as saying 0, 0.0 and this would be the same as saying um, 1.0, okay? They're all the same. This is one whole, one whole, one whole. This is zero tenths, zero, zero tenths. It's all the same, okay? So, I have to mark between zero tenths and 10 tenths. So I'm going to mark them off in tens. So in the middle, I'm going to have five tenths, right? And then one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, ten tenths. Okay. And I'm going to label the middle midpoint which would be uh, five tenths, which is going to be one, two, three, four, five tenths. That's the midpoint. So I'm gonna make that this hash a little bit larger because it's the halfway point, the midpoint. Now I have to figure out, well, where is some of these gonna go. So where would six tenths go? If you were looking at this number line, where do you suppose you would put six tenths? Well, this is gonna be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we're gonna put this one right here. So this is gonna be 0 0.6. It's gonna go right there. Where would 0 and 0.4, 4 tenths go? Right on the other side of the midpoint, right? So this would be 0 0.4, which is 4 tenths. Then I have to put in 0, 
I have to put in 78 one hundredths. So now remember, 78 one hundredths <coughs> is going to be somewhere in between six and well, between seven and eight, right? If this is 0 0.6, it's going to be bigger than 0 0.7 but it's going to be smaller than 0 0.8. So if this is 0.8 and this is 0.7, it's going to have to go like in the middle here. And that's going to be 0 0.7 eighths. And, and you know what? It's, it's not even going to go exactly in the middle the more, as I think about that because the, the middle is exactly 7. You know, if this is... 7 tenths and this is 8 tenths, it's going to go closer to the 8 tenths, closer to the 8 tenths. So it's 0, 78 one hundredths. And then the last one we have to do is 65 one hundredths. Well, that's going to be in between 6 tenths and 7 tenths. So it's, and it's close, it's like right dead set in the middle. So it's going to be right in the middle between six tenths and seven tenths. And I'm going to label it 0 0.65. So we made our number line in it. And because I was limited on space, I had to put mine kind of close. But you could make yours the full width of the page, or you could even turn your notebook sideways and write it so that you have the whole length of width of the page, which will be much longer. And you can make these spaces between the tenths bigger so that if you want to label them, you can, but you don't have to label them. Alrighty. Now, that is the, la the only thing that you have to, to learn for today. So let's do another practice on how to order them from least to greatest, okay? So we're gonna pick four decimals. We're gonna do, um, let's see if I can get another example from your book. Let's do put in order from least to greatest. I want you to put in order three and five tenths three and three tenths and three and 35 one hundredths. Now look what they're gonna do. They're gonna keep using the same numbers and just switch around where the decimal point is or switch around the order of the numbers. So you have to be careful. And that's why you need to rewrite it going uh, hamburger style because they're just gonna keep reusing all these digits trying to confuse you. So we're gonna rewrite it three and five tenths. Then I'm gonna line up my decimal point for the next one. I put my decimal in first and I got a three on either side of the decimal. And then I'm gonna do my last one. I put my decimal in first. What do I have before the decimal? I have the whole number three. What do I have after the decimal? I have three and I have a five. So now I'm all lined up and I can compare. I start, remember now we're going from least to greatest. So I'm gonna look for my smallest number first. So I've got a three and a three and a three. Can't tell yet. So I have to go one more space to the right. I have a five, a three, and a three. Well, I can't really tell yet either because I know it's not this one, but I don't know which one of these two it is. So I have to go one more digit over. Oh, and look at this. I've got nothing there. Remember, I've got that imaginary zero there and a five. Well, now I can compare it. Which one is smaller, that imaginary zero or their five? The imaginary zero. So that's going to go first. So three and three tenths goes first. We don't put that imaginary zero when we rewrite it in order. And I separate it with a semicolon. Then I'm gonna leave myself a little space and I'm gonna put the next one. So we know that this one goes first and this one goes second. So then I put three and 35 one hundredths next with a semicolon. 
And now I only have one more left. This is my third one. Three and five tenths. And now that is in the correct order. Let's look at one that's a, a little trickier. Let's look at this one. This time I want you, well, let's do it the same way. We'll still do it from least to greatest. Now look at what the numbers are gonna be. 13 and 3 tenths, 33 and 31 hundredths, 13 and 33 hundredths, and 130. Look at this, I told you what they were gonna do this. All ones and threes going across and a zero here and there. And we're still gonna go from the smallest to the largest. So let's rewrite it hamburger style and making sure that everything's lined up. So our first one here is 13 and 3 tenths. Leave yourself enough space. There's no reason to squish it into your notebook. And like I said, you might want to turn your notebook, instead of looking at it this way, you might want to do it this way so that all those lines are there for you to help you spread it out evenly. Then I'm going to do this one, which is 33 and 31 hundredths. 33 and 31 hundredths. Now I'm going to take my next decimal. 13 and 33 hundredths. And then I've got my last one, which is 130. And you might be saying to yourself, hold the presses, Mrs. Lennox. Why is, how am I going to do this? I don't have a decimal. How do I know where to put this? Well, you have to remember, I told you, you can never forget anything in mathematics. 130 is equal to 130.0. You can put an imaginary zero there and it does not change the value. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna put your decimal point in first. What comes before the decimal? A zero. What comes before the zero? A three. What comes before the three? A one. So look, even though I have two, a ones place and a tens place in these other three, my last one has a ones place, tens place, hundreds place. And then I can put in these two zeros. If you were thinking about this and you thought of it as money, this would be no problem to you because you would be saying $130.00. Money is, is a decimal, it's the same thing. So I could put 16 zeros up after, it's not gonna change the value, okay? We learned that yesterday. Alrighty, so now I'm going to start in my greatest place and I'm going to compare the digits. Now I have my greatest place this time is 100s, hundreds, the regular hundreds column. So I have a one, and I have nothing, nothing, and nothing, which are really the same things as having imaginary zeros, right? Okay, so I know it's not gonna be this one because I'm not going from greatest to least, I'm going from least to greatest. So this one is gonna be the, we know right away, this is gonna be the fourth one. Okay, now we're gonna look at the other three. We have a one and a three and a one. Well, we know that it's not going to be this one because three is bigger than these two ones. So that means this one has got to be the third one. If this is the biggest, it's going to be last. This is going to be the third one because it's the second biggest. So now I have to go to the next place until I find a digit that's different. So now I have a three and a three. Have to go again to the next place. I have a three and a three. Mm -mm. So I have to go again. 
I have a three and I have nothing. I've got that imaginary zero here. So three is bigger than zero. So you know this is gonna be the second one, which means this one is gonna be the first one. Now I'm gonna rewrite my answers in order from least to greatest, from least to greatest. So our, my smallest one is going to be 13 and 3 tenths. My second one is going to be 13 and 33 hundredths. It sounds bigger, doesn't it? But it's not. I mean, it is bigger, but it really sounds bigger. Um, then the third number, I'm going to put my semicolon in. My third number is going to be 33 and 31 hundredths. 33 and 31 hundredths. And I can't fit my last one here, so I'm going to write it down here. The last one is going to be, oh, maybe I can because it doesn't have anything else. Remember, we're not going to, to put these zeros in because these are imaginary zeros here and here. So we're going to rewrite the last one is 130. I could fit it because it didn't have any decimal places after. Now it's in order from least to greatest. Okay. We're going to try another one where we're going to go the opposite direction. This time we're going to go from greatest to least. Same process, exactly the same, pro same process. It's just going to be a matter of following the directions. So what if we do... <laughs> Let's do 90. No, that, I, that might be one of the problems you actually have to do in your book. So let's do um, 44 and 4 and 4 hundredths and 40 and four tenths and 44 and four hundredths. And we are going to do it from greatest to least. So let's rewrite them going down hamburger style. So our first one is the whole number 44. Instead of it coming last, this time it came first in our list. So we're just gonna put 44 and a decimal after it, okay? I don't think your book tells you to put the, the zero in for a whole number. No, it doesn't, so I'm not gonna either. Okay, so now we're gonna put in, we're gonna do our next number, which is four and four hundreds. So I put my decimal place in, I look what comes before it, and there's nothing else before that four in the ones place. Then there's a zero that comes after the decimal and a four that comes after the zero. Now I'm going to do my third number in the sequence. I put in my decimal point. What's to the before the decimal? A zero. And what comes before the zero? A four. And then what comes after the zero? I mean the decimal point? A four. Nothing else. And then finally, we're going to do our last one, which is put your decimal point in. What comes before the decimal? A four. What comes before that four? Another four. What comes after the decimal? A zero. What comes after the zero? A four. Okay, so now we can compare these. Look at this. It looks like uh, pumpkin's teeth on Halloween in your, in your jack-o'-lantern jack going every which way. Alrighty, so we're going to start in our greatest place, um, our, our greatest place to the left. So we have a four and a four and a four. And then we have that imaginary zero here. So since we're going from largest, greatest to least, we know that this one's gonna come last. This is gonna be the fourth one right here because 
It doesn't have anything. It's got a zero there. But we don't know which, we still can't do anything with this 44 and the 40.4 and the 44.04. So we go to the next place until we find a digit that's different. So now we have a four and a zero and a four. So this is different and it's smaller than these other two. So, and we're not going in that order. We're going from greatest to smallest. We know that this one is going to be third. So now we're left with 44 point and 44 point 04, 40, four hundredths or just 44. So I go to the next place. I have a zero and a zero. Still don't know. So then I have to go another place out because remember these are imaginary zeros here. And now I go out to the last place and I've got a four and a zero. Which one is bigger, the four or the zero? Right, the four. So that means this is going to be first and this will be second. Okay, so now we'll rewrite our numbers in order from greatest to least. So the greatest one is 44 and 4 hundredths, semicolon. Our next greatest is going to be the whole number 44. We just write it the way we were given it with no decimals or imaginary zeros. The next one is going to be 40 and 4 tenths. And our last one is going to be 4 and 4 hundredths. We're done. You could put this on a number line to help you, but sometimes I think a number line makes it harder because it's another step you have to draw. It's easier to just do it this way. Alrighty.